Hi, everybody. I'm Craig Hardesty with Out on Film, and I want to welcome everybody to our Out on Film in conversations with tonight's uh, party, as you can see. Um, after the world premiere of Goodbye 70s, we have the cast and crew of the film. And right now, I am going to turn this over to Out on Film's own Chris Lott, who is going to be moderating this fun conversation for all of you tonight. So, Chris, you can go ahead and take it away. All right, great, thank you. Um, my, yeah, my name is Chris Lott. I work with Turner Classic Movies. This is my third year working with um, Out on Film on the, pro, um, the programming group. And I am very fortunate tonight because I get to welcome, first of all, um, multi-hyphenate, at least quadruple threat, actor, writer, producer, director, Todd Vero. Welcome. Hello, um, thank you. Yeah, we're gonna assume that um, everybody watching has seen the film already, so there may be some spoilers, of course. <laughs> And then I uh, also, they're making my job very easily because we have just about the entire cast as well as the composer here tonight. Um, to make it even easier on myself, I, I'd love to just kind of start off. I, I'd love to let you all kind of introduce yourself and talk a little bit about like your career journey that um, got you up to this point, how you got involved with the film. And, I, and I'll, I'll just read off names so we can, <laughs> so we can have some order here. Uh, James, you want to go first? Yeah, so I'm James Kleinman. I'm a, a producer on the film and have a small acting role, play Richard, um, the hairdresser in the movie. And um, I'm Todd's husband, which is kind of how I got roped in. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been an actor for, for nearly uh, 20 years and I've made my own uh, short film, LDR, which uh, I roped Todd into helping me with. And this is the third feature, uh, feature film that I've worked with um, Todd on as a producer and with a small acting role too. <laughs> All right, uh, Julie, I'm just gonna go through the order that you're appearing on my Zoom camera, so. Okay, well, I'm Julie Chapin and I played Lexi, the theater owner, and um, I know I went into New York to audition for this film and, and the part just appealed to me. I, I mean, I just, um, especially when I heard from Todd that she is based, or that I was based on a real person that he knew back um, in the day who owned this theater and she uh, made it more interesting. And I, I just had a feeling what, what she'd be like. And I, I, and I enjoyed it tremendously. I've been acting only the last 10 years. I acted as a child and then I spent, I hate to say how many years as a corporate attorney. <laughs> and so I had all the, the um, the passion kind of locked inside of me. So when I took early retirement, I just threw myself back into film and theater and commercials and all kinds of fun stuff. But this was definitely a, a wonderful role for me, a different. Hey, Chris. Hi, hello. Hi. Um, hey, everyone. Um, yeah, I, uh, I got involved with this because I had done a little part for uh, Todd in another uh, film he did uh, probably a year or two before called Squirrels. Um, and so then he reached out to me um, after that and asked me to get involved with this and I auditioned and the rest is history. Um, I've been doing dance and theater since I was about six years old, I guess. Um, and then I majored in drama at NYU. Um, so I'm still here just poking around doing the actor thing came from a, a live theater performance that happened on the street earlier tonight. So <laughs> here we are. Nice. Thank you for having us. Yeah, great. Andrew? Hello, um, I'm Andrew. Uh, I played Matt in the film. Um, and yeah, I auditioned for this um, and just thought it was like a really unique, um, important story uh, and wanted to be a part of it. I knew that immediately. Um, so that's basically how I got involved. Uh, and, you know, since then, uh, well, we were just talking actually on the last day of my shooting, um, <clears throat> excuse me, like in the bar towards the end, um, that was like, we like wrapped and then I drove straight to Chicago where I've been since. Um, so I've been doing a lot of like live comedy in Chicago, which is kind of like more of my background, a lot of like improv and sketch. And then, um, you know, continuing uh, acting in plays and on film and stuff. All right, uh, Ken. Hey everybody, I'm Ken Kesar. I played Vinny. 
Um, I, I spend most of my time in the theater. I'm a, um, a playwright and a director. I've been working for a long time as an acting coach. Um, and uh, I, uh, in the last several years, sort of found my way back to acting. And uh, I submitted myself for Todd's wonderful film. And uh, um, he came to me as Vinny. And I, it was, it, I'm so honored that he did. And it was such a, such a joy um, to be a part of it. Uh, but I, I just uh, submitted myself to him you know, like on a casting call and, uh, and, I, and he, he saw my audition tape and, and uh, called me in to read in person and then cast me. So I was so happy that he did. It was, it was such an honor to do it. Yeah. And Marie? Hi, I'm Marie Smalley. I'm here in New York City. Um, I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in the 70s, <laughs> um, class of 1980. And I did a lot of... Um, uh, classical theater after that in New York City off off Broadway and a lot of street performance art stuff in the East Village but I left it and then for 30 years I was in the art world and in 2016 and 2016 I decided to go back to performing and um, learned the ropes doing a lot of background but you know on great movie sets and TV sets um, and then in 18 started auditioning for films and uh, got a whole bunch of them including this one which was just great um, uh, cause I really relate to her and, um, uh, it's also the first feature I've done that's coming out. A lot of them were supposed to come out in <laughs> March and April and they weren't, um, because the New York and LA markets were really shut down. Yeah. And, um, so I have a bunch more things lined up. And in the meantime, I have been studying with Giles Foreman since April. I don't know if you know him, James in London. And uh, Rob Clare from the Royal Shakespeare Company in a private class. So I've been trying to, you know, keep my instrument tuned. Um, but uh, this is the biggest moment so far in the pandemic for me, <laughs> career-wise, to be here with everybody, to see the film, and to, you know, to be part of it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Well, we're so happy to have you. Um, Justin? Hey everybody, I'm Justin Ivan Brown. I play Horse. Um, this film was a really great time. It was, <laughs> uh, it was a fun thing to make. Um, this is my first feature as well. I've been acting and performing for a little over 20 years, mostly theater and burlesque performing. Um, so this was quite the experience. And when I saw the casting call, you know, I did my research and I was like, oh, this is okay. All right, this is Todd Verreau we're talking about. All right, yes, in, done, awesome. So it's an exciting thing, and I'm glad to be part of it. So. Ashley? Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Ashley Bergon, and I played Beth, uh, the makeup artist and uh, friend. And um, I, I actually found, uh, this through just like searching through casting calls I was doing lots of like indie stuff and shorts and uh, lots of background work which is always a thing and um, I just I the character sounded really interesting and the fact that it was like a period piece was really intriguing to me and then I the fact that I was able to read the script and the script was so awesome like I remember reading the script and crying because I could just like it was it's such a great story and it has such a good balance of like comedy and and tragedy and um, so I was really excited and then it turned out to be an amazing experience. <laughs> Great, uh, Mike. Uh, hey everyone, uh, thanks for having us. Um, I'm Mike Drayden Figueroa. Um, I met Todd, uh, Todd reached out to me years ago um, to be a part of a film he did called Available Light and um, we connected because at the time I was in adult entertainment and uh, which was a segue from my, my uh, career as it is now. Um, so uh, getting to work with like, like I, like Justin, uh, when Todd reached out to me, you know, I saw the email, I let it sit there and I just did my research on his work and we have a lot of mutual friends in common, which we actually interact with, not just uh, virtually. And uh, I replied back, sure, I'll do it. So ever since then, when Todd uh, has something uh, coming up, he'll drop me a line and say, hey, I'm doing this thing. Would you be interested? And I always say yes to Todd. I never say no. So um, he asked me to come and do this uh, thing. And um, 
uh, he sent me the sides and I read them. I, I thought this was really cool. And of course, uh, the New York City bathhouse scene, uh, <laughs> I've experienced it, so I thought it would be really cool. I couldn't wait to, to do it. Um, I too, like many here, I've, you know, everything has been on hold because of the pandemic that we're in, but you know, I'm a content creator, studied theater at HP Studios when I was a teenager. Um, I have my own web series, um, Last Call, if you want to check it out. And uh, yeah, that's how I ended up here uh, with all you amazing guys. And I got to say, you know, um, I got to work with Ken and Justin and I saw Andrew in, uh, in action. Um, I did not get to see Chris in action. Um, you guys made me step up my game and I just got to say, I was just blown away watching you guys work. So thank you for that. Uh, Jack. Hi, I'm Jack Waters. And um, yeah, I have the honor of showing one of Todd's earliest, if not the first uh, film that he showed in New York City when I was the director of a place called ABC No Rio, a legendary underground um, art and media space. And um, yeah, known Todd through the years. I'm also a filmmaker. One of my shorts is called The Male Gaze, um, experimental queer short that's um, distributed at the Filmmakers Co-op. And uh, one of my acting roles was in a movie called Jason and Shirley, directed by Stephen Winter. And um, one day I got an email from Todd and I was delighted to be invited to do a scene in this movie. I've never worked with Todd before until now. So I'm really excited and thrilled to see that the scene made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> great. And, and last but not least, we also have Colin. I am Colin Owens and uh, I've known Todd since about 1999 when a mutual friend of ours uh, handed Todd a demo tape of mine and I worked on a film called Shucking the Curve and we've done a few projects since then but this would be the first one in about 13 or 14 years. So I'm really delighted to work on this great film. Great. Thanks. Well, thanks again for all of you for being here. I love it. It's a little reunion. I feel like I got invited to the rap party <laughs> a little bit later. So, yeah. Well, Todd, um, I, let's rewind a little bit. So, what kind of? Um, I mean, you're you you have a very you're so prolific. You, I, I feel like um, in in kind of researching your career, and I and I saw um, Frisk way back in the '90s. Um, I loved it and I so I've kind of followed you on and off through the years and you seem to have a way you you almost make movies faster than people can see them it's pretty amazing but um so speaking of goodbye seventies in particular do you do you have kind of a process you always follow or kind of and talk to us about that and kind of where the idea for the film came from how long you've been thinking about it working on it um, well I've been working on I feel like I've been working on this movie for quite a few years because um, it's something that's sort of been in, in my mind for a long time. And um, I've always been fascinated by that time period of, this, of the early, early to late seventies when pornography really, gay pornography really started and, um, and straight pornography as well. But, and that time period in New York um, has always fascinated me. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time researching and thinking about it and talking to different people. And, um, and then it took me quite a while to write the script. So, I mean, this was quite a bit different than most of my movies because this is something I've really been working on for quite a few years. Um, and it's uh, a lot bigger than a lot of my other projects because it's a bigger cast and a lot more locations. And, you know, so it was a lot more organizing to do so it, it, it took quite a while to get it, it all together but i mean the main thing for me was getting the cast together because it, for this movie it really needed to be a family and you needed to feel the love between them all um so it, it's really hard to find the right people but i'm so glad i did because there, everyone was great in the movie and uh, it really did feel like a family and uh, it was a lot of fun to do when you're shooting. Yeah, there's there's a lot of depth to all the characters here. I, I almost feel like it's 
Um, just from what I've seen, it's it's one of your I feel like almost most accessible accessible movies. And um, uh, but everyone did a great job. There's this I haven't watched it yet, but there's this show Ratchet on Netflix now where they uh, it's about the nurse from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And I I mean just thinking about it, I was like I feel like you could do this prequel series about just about any one of the characters from this movie, and and I would totally be there for the whole thing. It's true, yeah. And maybe maybe, yeah, maybe brought, brought brought the, the characters relate to life. Do a series. Yes. Someone, yeah. if someone's got Ryan Murphy's number, will <laughs> <And, laughs> I'm sure the cards yeah. would be the, Yeah. The, well, it doesn't really fit your job. So, so if, if Disney calls, would you be, you'd really want <laughs> the next Avengers movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I, I don't know about an Avengers movie. I don't, I'm not really into those. I can't get into those movies. They're yeah, too fun. There's too many special effects, too many things. You know, I, it's not my thing. But if they yeah. wanted to do a series based on all the characters from Goodbye 70s, sure, I'd do it. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I would. I'll pitch that for you. Um, well, let me talk. Uh, let's talk a bit, a little bit about the production. Um, you did. You were did a lot of location shoots. Um, how did you choose locations? Did you travel together? Well, I mean, the hardest location to get was the, the actual porno theater because um, there are no theaters in New York that look like a movie theater from the seventies. They've all been renovated or torn down or you just don't have the right look. Um, but I knew, because I went to school, I went to RISD in Providence. Um, so I knew this theater, the Avon, in Providence, Rhode Island. And it, it used to be a porn theater in the 70s. And it hasn't really changed much. It still has the old seats and the old cigarette machine and the old, all the old uh, tampon machines and stuff. So I knew that we had to get that theater somehow. So I managed to get it. And that was the first stuff we shot. and. It was really great because we all went to Providence. We all stayed at the ho same hotel. We all got to know each other. And um, it was part of the whole building the family thing. And it was really great to do that first. Um, and we used some other locations in Providence too to get sort of exterior 70s looking stuff. Um, but we filmed a lot of real locations here in New York. Uh, we filmed at the Ever Everard Bass exterior to get an establishing shot and um, we filmed the fire. I mean, it was a lot of different locations, but it was a lot of fun to sort of find the right places that sort of fit in. Yeah, you did a great job. I mean, right from the get beginning with the aspect ratio and some of the found footage and costumes and everything, it really brought you right back to that time period. It was a great job on that. Do you, I mean, outside of those other jobs, I mean, I know you do editing, uh, costume design. Do you bring anybody else to help you with any of that? Well, yeah, I mean, everybody in the cast helped with the costumes because I know Marie brought all of her costumes were from her wardrobe. Um, Ashley brought a lot of costumes, Justin brought some. So, I mean, every, everybody sort of, you know, we were all in it together and we all helped, they helped me out with the different looks and stuff, which I think is part of the, of the fun too, and getting into characters so much, the costumes and the makeup. Um, but it was a lot, the great thing is, is we have eBay now and all this stuff online so we, you, know, you can find a phone from the 70s and like wallpaper from the 70s and underwear that hasn't been opened yet from the 70s, <laughs> stuff like that. So it was a lot of fun to just gather all this stuff together. Yes, Bradford's underwear collection was great. <laughs> <laughs> Very authentic. <laughs> um, well, let me, so what, um, just to go kind of ar around the group again, what were some of your, what was, one of your favorite character moments in the movie? Do you want, and we can kind of go, we'll go backwards this time. Jack? Oh my goodness. Well, I can't think of a more delightful scene to play than a shower scene, of <laughs> course. And uh, yeah, especially this particular character who is so um, affected by the trauma of um, being targeted. Um, you know, for busts during the era where just like being gay uh, probably wasn't illegal in itself at that point, but still prone to constant um, arrest. And so um, one one of the, the, I was really into it. And I feel like I was so method about the scene that <laughs> I was like frantically washing my hand and I was and I was watching the same spot and I was so like, vigorous about it that after the shoot I had this sore you know like a scar a rash basically for 
weeks afterwards. Um, so I kind of felt that was just a great way to lose myself in this character. Awesome. Mike? Uh, um, as far as I'm concerned or the other, the other players, because when I watched the film, I, I completely forgot uh, that I was in it because I was so drawn in by everyone's, uh, everyone's performance. Um, what I particularly enjoyed, what stood out to me the most was the angle that Todd got of Ken through the, um, uh, through the, the film machine. Like there was, there was a, the way you captured that moment, just, you don't see that in, in filmmaking anymore. It's very rare. I know that I hadn't seen it in a long time, but to see that, that device between the camera and, and Ken in that moment was, stood out to me. And that's the, the one thing I, re, I remember the most. Um, what I also found really, um, inspiring was everyone's bravery. Uh, there was no, I mean, we all go through our, our processes, but um, everyone's um, bravery in their, in their characters was just so evident. There was no, it seemed, and you guys did your job very well, it seemed that there was no hindrance. There was no, um, no one was holding back. And I enjoyed that a lot, and, uh, especially with Justin. Um, he, the whole the whole masculinity in his voice and the way he carried the character was uh, a lot of fun to watch. Um, I also think that the uh, the part that hit home for me uh, was uh, the, uh, you know, the revelation of you know AIDS and uh, losing people and growing up as a teenager in that time you know losing friends from week to week. Um, it, it's still very raw for me, and just to to see that. Um, it just reminded me of uh, a lot of people that have gone and that I miss dearly, but because I remember them, they will they will live forever. But it, it just reminded me how how not that long ago this was, and um, and it was an honor to their memory, I suppose. Um, I also I also enjoyed <laughs> how we created um, the bathhouse uh, check-in area. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna. Uh, ruin it for everyone, but uh, Todd's creativity has no bounds. It has zero bounds. Nobody can come for Todd's creativity at all. It, it happens fast as well, doesn't it? Like um, It does, it we, does. In five, it, it was not even five minutes and we had a full on set and I'm like, all right, this is going down. Uh, <laughs> there was one scene with Julie in, um, in her office that was, we were supposed to shoot in Providence and we ran out of time there, so. Todd just very quickly came up with something with the um, the leopard print fabric <laughs> yeah. and it fitted in with the costume and yeah, match, yeah, match my shirt. I remember yeah. that. Oh my god! <laughs> but it all you, you know it was pretty fast, but it was a it was a great decision mm -hmm. I think, and I, I loved her office. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I and wanted I, to apply for a job there with Lexi. I loved it. <laughs> I think the final the final piece for me is uh, when we were working in the bar. Um, you know, you, when you're an actor, you, there's many different uh, thoughts on this, but when you're, when you're an actor, I think the most of your, most of the work comes from listening. And when you're really connected, even when it's not, you're not actively in the scene or you have dialogue, when you're listening, the entire world comes to life. So when we were in the bar and we were trying to put it all together, um, I wasn't, I, I was listening to Andrew and to Ken Ken's dialogue and it was very moving. I had to con consciously force myself not to stare at them because they were so authentic in the moment that I was like, oh shit, you know, wow, what it, this is, what's going on? You know, they were, it was very uh, powerful. So um, that, that also is another moment for me that really stood out. So kind, Mike, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ashley? <laughs> Oh man, there's so many great moments. And like some of them, like I, I, when I, like I said, when I had read the script, I like was excited to see how they were going to come out and so many different things, even that I didn't expect it, like were like stood out to me when I actually saw it. Um, but there's just so many great emotional, one of my favorite scenes was the New Year's party. 
um, because just that juxtaposition of like everyone cheering and excited and happy when you guys know, you know, you're the only people that know in the scene. Um, Ken and Chris, you guys know that horse is dead. And, you know, and it's just, it's such a, it's such an amazing, strange thing, but that really stood out to me a lot. Justin? Uh, it's hard, it's hard to pick a moment. I think that my, I, I was lucky to work with so many people on different little pieces throughout this. So I cherish all of them very, very, they're all very special to me actually. Um, I think my favorite day of filming was when Chris and I spent the day on the pier. Um, it was just, it was just a really nice day. It was just Todd and Chris and I, and you know, it's the date scenes. The first time you get to see kind of the relationship forming between um, Horse and Bradford. And there was just something that day that was just special. I was roller skating, we were just on the pier, you know, not on the Christmas street pier, but close enough that it was just, film that day, just thinking about all the good times and all the, all the other relationships and tete-a-tetes and uh, were experienced in the same location or close by uh, so many years ago, not too many years ago, but um, it, it was just magical that day. And I had a good time filming with you both. Um, when we were in Providence, I mean, that whole experience was also wonderful. It was just, it was like shoot after shoot after shoot, but like hanging out all the time and um, picking in local culture and Providence I had never been. It was a blast. I had, I had a really great time. But um, this, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of great moments. When I read the script too, I wasn't exactly sure how it was gonna be pieced together um, and still didn't until we <laughs> just seen it. Um, and it really, really was amazing, I think. Uh, having lost so many friends in that period and been raised by um, a lot of the re remaining men left from that generation. Uh, I am blessed to have been handed down the stories of that generation by the few um, that I was raised with. And I think about this film and the importance of it just as like so many younger uh, queer people not having those storytellers nearby. Um, and I'm hoping that a film like this can bridge that gap and uh, we can start talking again and we can start talking about our history and start um, encouraging everyone to get back to the fun and the freedom before the pain. So uh, this, whole, this whole project was really special for me personally. Thank you. I, think I will say that you, you mastered that kind of cheeky come hither porn look too. I love that. <laughs> 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 Marie? Oh, your mic is, your mic is still, you're still muted. Yeah, there's so much with Esther. I, I don't, it, just up front, she's, you know, sometimes unfiltered, but she was always ready to dispense, you know, TLC when needed. And <clears throat> I'm just thinking, back to the period, and I talked about this with Todd and James at the audition, um, you know, having had friends with AIDS and the mothers with the AIDS quilts and, you know, the, the role of that. And I think about that era when parents um, sometimes, you know, disowned their gay sons and daughters, you know, but she did not. Um, she not only stayed very close to her son, she like embraced his world, and then also she loved the people he loved, you know? So she was this, um, what was really nice was about how Todd structured it. He created these scenes for her. I think she comes in about midway, but then she's woven into the next, the rest of the movie. It's like, she's this thread, you know, that takes you to the end with, with Ken, with Vinny, her son. And um, so, yeah, she's a woman with fortitude and um, I just have to apologize to Ken for slapping him the way I do, but he just, <laughs> I was so distracted by Justin. Um, it was completely, <laughs> in, <laughs> Esther was just undone at that moment. But um, I will say watching the movie, um, 
and having been the sort of mother figure for all these young men here, um, I got to see what was going on when Esther wasn't there. <laughs> and I, I didn't, and but that's all fine. I knew the, I knew the, the business part and what they were doing, but I mean, the personal stuff, you know, I, I didn't know that Matt died. You know, I didn't know, I thought Brad was something went with, happened with Brad, but there it was, you know? So I was actually very, very moved when I saw the film a couple days ago. I, I was very protective and, and, you know, just remember hanging on to Vinny at the end there. Um, so I love what you did with her. I love, I love the voice you gave her. I love the, the, the situations you put her in. Um, I, I really thought it, it was just a great character and I, I loved playing her as well. Um, Ken. Oh man, for me, you have not lived until you're smoking a joint in bed with Chris. I <laughs> had <laughs> 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 uh, so much fun. It was a long day for us. It was the first day I think that we shot and it was a long day um, and we got to know each other real well. And then right after that, we went to Providence. So I think the way Todd set that up was so smart because we really did get to bond first and then we got to bond with Justin and, 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 and Andrew and everybody went to Providence and that was really fun. That whole week in Providence was magical. Um, and then the, the scenes where like the post funeral scenes were all lying on the floor, you know, after the funeral, those were really magical because you felt such a strong bond between all of us. So Todd really did create this wonderful family feeling that uh, I don't know how quite he did it it was just so organic and so natural um, I loved it and uh, going out to Fire Island with uh, with Chris and Justin was really fun we had a great time that day too and uh, running around on the beach and all that so that was all good and I and I'll never forget getting slapped by Esther that was <laughs> that was awesome and I, I, I'm, just like, I'm, I'm, I'm naming every scene in the movie because I love it but uh, the scene that Mike referred to of me through the uh, through the, if, if someday they do video tombstones, as far as I'm concerned, I'll be very happy if, if they put that shot on a loop on my video. Remember <laughs> <laughs> through that video, through that, that film uh, canister. So. <laughs> I love it. Um, Andrew. Um. Yeah. I mean, as so many people have said, there's so many uh, moments that. Uh, we could talk about. Um, one that just came to me, uh, and this is not even uh, an on-screen moment, but one of the days when we were shooting, uh, you know, kind of like the, one of the family scenes where Esta's, uh, you know, taking care of all of us. I remember before shooting, um, Marie and I sitting outside of the apartment and just like eating breakfast together and having a really, really lovely morning where it kind of felt like she was, you know, giving me advice. And like, it was a very seamless transition from that moment into, uh, filming that day. So that's something that kind of came to me just now. But um, in terms of like my character, um, I think I really appreciated like the youthfulness and innocence uh, that is there for um, Matt, uh, you know, throughout, even as he does some like perhaps not so innocent things um, and, you know, gets into uh, drugs and uh, then eventually has like the relapse. Um, but even uh, Ken's voice over there, um, you know, talking about how it's like not, he like didn't think it was like a suicide or he doesn't want to think of it that way. Um, I felt like that was really like nice button, uh, very sad, um, but like uh, interesting button on my character um, and just something that I really uh, resonated with and appreciated. Chris. Oh, where to begin? <laughs> um, first, like, definitely going back to what Justin said, what other people have said about um, telling a story that takes place within and features. And I remember at one point, Justin, I, for, I forget when this happened, but someone asked us what the film was about. And my response was just like, the AIDS crisis, <laughs> like the HIV, you know? Um, so being able to tell that sort of story was, um, again, very meaningful for me as well. So just wanted to echo that. But also gotta, I feel like I'm just like shouting back at people, Ken, I was gonna bring out those exact scenes for this moment. And it's partially because, um, you know, I'm still in that place with watching it where like, 
I, I feel like I'm reacting to my feelings about the scene or about what was happening too. And that exact, uh, what you described, that it was like the first thing we shot. It was like our first long date together. And it was a lot about figuring out that friendship and figuring out like the boundaries and or lack of boundaries um, and, and the closeness between those two uh, uh, a platonic male friends, which like, you know, gay, having gay male platonic friends, especially in this day and age with like, the, the grinder and like all the stuff, everything's so sexualized, you know? So having platonic gay friends is, I, I think, a, <laughs> no, it's, a, it's an interesting thing in the gay community. It's more, you know, anyways, y'all know where I'm going with this. Um, but the, shooting that scene was, was so much fun. Um, but I would be remiss if I also didn't give a shout out to the day that we did our first read through. And <laughs> Justin's eyes are getting big right now. <laughs> He knows where I'm going. We had to have like a little loop of us like humping basically to play in the theater when we went to Providence. So literally we had known each other for just a few hours and it was like, okay, now we're going to get this quick shot of you guys fake fucking. So, <laughs> so um, those are definitely two, you know, my reasons aren't rooted in the story, but they were, they were definitely highlights of the shoot for me. Mm -hmm. Love you guys. <laughs> Julie? Oh, yeah. I'm just, the, when I was shooting in, the, the, in Providence and also in New York in the um, scene at my office, it was so real to me. And I think I'll, I'll, I'll give Todd a lot of credit because he, I remember even in the theater, he brought in the sandwich. He made the sandwiches that I, she's eating. You know, um, I think he took the crust off for me too. After I <laughs> <laughs> and then when I looked at it, um, when I'm reading my little romance novel, the way you piped in the French, the French speaking, it's just all those touches are great. Um, but the best part was actually reacting to Chris and um, like I'll say, uh, Bradford and Vinny. Um, they really were real to me when they came in and they were bumbling around with the with the big uh, film and I'm like, and then finally they want to leave with it and I took it and I really feel like I was just reacting to them and I, I don't even know how I managed to get this, the words out because I was totally reacting to them. And then the wonderful thing is how much they developed their characters, or particularly Bradford, by the time we were in my office, he's like, he's gonna be like, do I have to monitor this? I mean, do I have to count the money? He had, he, he asserted himself from the time when I first met him in the theater. They were much more bashful. They were not able to. And that's great that that was able to be developed in, in just 10 minutes, we'll say, the two scenes. So I think it was really good. I, I, I attribute the characters themselves and the script in Todd's artful way of filming things. Really good. Uh, James? Um, yeah, I, I love working with... Um, with Andrew, um, who played Matt, and I feel like a really nice sort of like friendship between the characters developed that, was it in the script? It was kind of in the script, yes. but, but we made it our own friendship anyway. And um, Andrew was just so, yeah, so kind of open to that and such a, a great person to work with in those scenes. And I loved all the, the family scenes. They seemed quite choreographed. But <laughs> but we stayed in that that family moment. There was a lot of lasagna eating, and I don't eat dairy, so I had to have the dairy free lasagna, which Todd Todd made too, as well as making the sandwiches. <laughs> so the food was good as well. We got to eat whilst we were in the in our scenes. Um, and another scene that sits, sticks out emotionally is in the uh, the hair salon, and um, what Marie was saying mm. uh, as Esther as someone who was accepting, and Richard kind of didn't. Ex expect her to be so accepting um, because obviously he, um, the salon was very quiet because everyone had stopped coming. I think that was a, a nice emotional moment. Um, can, I, can, can I actually redo my answer? Because I just remembered that James Absolutely. and Andrew <laughs> as the two cattiest bitches <laughs> in this film, but their friendship was just everything. And James, I cannot hear. Um, I, what is the line? I'll just die of boredom. <laughs> I cannot hear that without losing my mind. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it's interesting. The movie kind of starts off and you've got, um, I guess, I guess watching it now in 2020 reality, you kind of see the beginning and you've got the, the, the Nixon references and, um, and, um, and the movie kind of takes you on an emotional journey where there is kind of, even though they're like creating porn or whatever, there is a, there is a, a joyfulness and a, and a happiness and an innocence there um, in those early days of the gay rights movement. And it does kind of end kind of on this sad note with the AIDS crisis that are some of the, the tragedies that, that strike this group. Um, but like I said, seeing the Nixon part and then, and then seeing that the, the kind of sad ending parts, it, it, it actually, there was a hopefulness in the movie to me where I'm like, okay, we can have um, an, a really interesting person in the White House and still <laughs> emerge on the other side from that. Or we can, um, you know, the gay community can go through a crisis like the AIDS crisis and, um, and, and survive that as well. So um, in these times, uh, there was a hopefulness to the, to the movie, I think, as well. And, and seeing the, the journey and the bonds that you all had was, was inspiring. Um, I guess, Todd, kind of what, um, what kind of themes did you want people to pick up on in this movie? What was important in it to you? Well, what was important to me was um, the sort of the idea of a chosen family and how important that is to have friendships with people that are unconditional friendships. Um, and, you know, they're people that you love because, not because they're your family, but they're because they're people that you can relate to and you can all love each other and support each other. And the other, I mean, the main theme was really um, that you can pursue your dream, whatever it is, in, in whatever way you want to. And um, that's important. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be successful even, but if you pursue your dream and don't give up, then that in itself is its own reward because you're doing something that you love and with people that you love. And that's, and that's sort of, you know, kind of what I do with my movies, you know, basically the same, same idea. Yeah. Do you have your next, um, do you have your next 10 movies ready to go? Are they already percolating there? Or? Uh, not 10, but maybe five. Okay. <laughs> Let's figure. Yeah. Well, well, great. Look, um, I wish I could stay here all night with all of you. This is so amazing. I feel so honored that I got to meet you all. This is a this is an amazing cast reunion. Like I said, the movie is fantastic. I wish you all the the best success, and um, hopefully, uh, we'll we'll come out the other side of 2020 all in a better place and ready to move forward. Um, thank you again so much for being part of Out on Film uh, 2020 this year. Thank you for thank showing you. the movie, and uh, thank you, thanks everyone thank for watching. Right. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. See everybody again.